It's time now for Word Alive from the Upper Room in Gatesville, North Carolina, with Pastor Eric Earhart. Join us in seeing lives changed by the power of God's Word. You're invited to join us in person on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. at 807 Main Street in Gatesville, North Carolina. You can also listen to our live audio podcast at www.ustream.com. And now, today's message. I, I look forward to it. That day is actually going to be the 26th, is the birthday um, for Michael and Melissa Earhart, our twins, will turn three on that day. So they're going to think that that whole event is their birthday. <laughs> Amen. They're going to be telling people for a long time, we had to, like the whole church came out for our birthday. People came from all over the place to celebrate our birthday with us. So we, we won't tell them any different until, they're, they're, until they turn 30. Amen? Amen. We'll let, them, we'll let them believe that that is true. Amen. Amen. Um, this month, of course, I know a lot of people this month will, are going to focus on Mother's Day. And we will be talking about spiritual mothers. Amen. Not birth mothers, but spiritual mothers. So be, be prepared to be blessed. And some of you men need to be some spiritual mothers too. Amen. So don't think you're going to check out on that day and, and miss out on that message. Be prepared to find out how to be a spiritual mother. But I want to start with the first Sunday of this month talking about um, spiritual life. Amen? I, I want to talk about who you are. Who you are. So often we have a wrong concept of who we are based on who others have told us we are. We, 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 we don't have God's word on it. We don't have a, a scriptural basis. We don't have a rhema word. We don't have a, a logos word. We have nothing to stand on other than what others have told us about ourselves, and then our own perverted sense of ourselves as we look in the mirror. Amen? And, and so I have, to, I have to try to use my own insecurities and what other people have said about me to establish who I am. And I got to tell you, that doesn't work too well. So what I want to do is help us establish today who we are in God's eyes. Is that all right with everybody? Amen. Amen. Would you like to know who God says you are? Amen. Amen. Well, let's, let's find out. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to give us eyes to see, ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Lord God, that it's only by your Spirit that our lives are changed. It's by your Word that our lives are changed, oh God. So we ask you to release both today, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, and let them change our lives today. Lord God, I want to be changed, and I want these people to be changed more and more into the image of Jesus Christ that we can bring you, Heavenly Father, glory and honor in the earth. In Jesus' name I pray this, and all who agree said amen, amen. and amen. And, and dealing with the, the, the question of who I am, I, I've... Um, I've used a lot of different methods to try to find out. Education, military, um, financial status, these different things are the ones that I've used. And you may recognize them in your own life, saying that, that at different times, because I had lots of money, well, I thought I was somebody. At different times, because I had little money, I thought I was nobody. At different times, because I was getting an education, well, I'm a somebody. At other times, when I recognized that I was less educated than someone around me, well, I'm a nobody. I, and, and, and that's a roller coaster of emotions trying to decide who I am in life, and that stinks. In Genesis 2 7, it said, The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. I think the first thing that, that I take from that is um, the humility factor that I'm just dust. Can, can we start with that for a minute? Let's be humble about the reality of knowing that someone can live 80 years through uh, uh, two wars, through multiple uh, uh, accidents, live through diseases, and, and a nine-year-old can die from a bee sting. I'm just dust. This, this, this outside here was just formed of dust. But then there's something that, that, that I've got to identify in there that that, that dust had something supernatural happen to it. Hmm? It said, and he, he breathed 
ruach, the, 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 the breath of life. God breathed into the nostrils of man and he became a living being. When, when we die, when, when we lay on the slab and we die, instantly our bodies lose 21 grams. We today, and, and we need to pray before we leave here, our next door neighbor passed away this morning. We've been ministering to him uh, uh, um, and, 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 and loved this family for these last 10 years and had a great relationship with them. And today was his day and the family's mourning. And we mourn with them and we want to encourage them to, to stand strong and keep their eyes on the Lord as they go through this pain of loss. Today was his day. And it's hard for a family to gather that. And him and I were the same age. Him and I were the same age. And it's hard for a family to, to, to gather that, to, that there's a moment when this has to leave. But whew, this also has to leave. Where, where does it go? What, it, what is it? What is the essence of life? Well, we're told here that I was formed from the dust of the earth, that, that God breathed, life into the man's nostrils and I became a living person. Now, there's a, there's a, um, a doctrine in Christianity called the Trinity where it says that God is one God in, in three persons. Amen? God is Trinity. Now, that's, that Trinity means uh, three in one. A lot of people struggle with that. A lot of people struggle with that. Many different religions struggle with that. I myself, I remember as a young Christian, trying to put that together, and it was too much for my mind. Amen? Let's just be, let's just be, there's some things that are too great for our minds. But I suggest you study it, you think about it, don't just accept it because I say it, look in the scripture and see what it says. You wrestle with that yourself, and see that, that God is one God, containing three persons. But, but here it says, um, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I see three persons identified there. On the day that Jesus was baptized, we hear the Father speak from heaven. We have the Son of God standing in the water and we see the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Again, we see the three and one at one moment. Amen? Well, I'll submit to you that we are also Trinity. If we're made in God's image, and if God is Trinity, then I submit to you that I also am a Trinity. Amen? Let's think that through for a minute. So it says here in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you, someone say me, through and through, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Amen? Amen. But when I say me, what did you mean by that? What were you thinking when you said me? I got to tell you that most of us think about this body is me. That's who we think we are. But if you remember, the body was formed from the dust of the ground. And God breathed into the man. And then he became a living being. Wow. Wow. So, so this bag of bones, this, uh, this uh, body of flesh is not me. In fact... Um, when, when we begin to think about that Thessalonians chapter, verse, I want to read that again. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. Sanctify me through and through. The word sanctify means set apart, be made holy. Sanctify me through and through. That means he's got to start somewhere and get through to somewhere else. Amen? That means... That means that there's a, there's a deep work that needs to be done in Eric Earhart. Not a shallow work. Not a, um, well, Jesus, 
I, I just want you to forgive me of my sin, now let me go on with my life. No, he wants to sanctify me through and through. Wow, well, what's that mean? What's he doing? Well, he going to told us what? Spirit, soul, and body. Wow, so, so I'm a trinity, and, and I'm made up of, of three parts the same way God is. Amen? So you see here that your spirit, that's who you are. It's the meaning and purpose. It's love. It's the heart of man. Amen? And without Christ's redeeming power, without the spirit of God bringing my spirit back to life, the, the heart of man, the spirit of man is wicked. We, we, we have been uh, corrupted as rust corrupts metal, as cancer corrupts flesh, as, as disease corrupts trees and animals and things we see, sin has corrupted the human heart. But it didn't stop there because that's who I am. I am spirit. Say, I am spirit. I, am spirit. I, have, a soul. I have a soul. I live in a body. Now, we're going we're gonna to say this a few times because you need to grasp this. You're going to walk out of here today knowing who you are. Amen? You're going to walk out of here knowing you. So I am spirit. That's where my, my meaning, my purpose, the very love, who I am is my spirit man. Okay? I have a soul. This is my mind, will, and emotions. This is the part of me that you understand as personality. Okay? And then, of course, I live in a body. And wow, how much emphasis and focus we put on body. But it's nothing but dust if there had not been the breath of life breathed into it. It's nothing but dust. But we put all emphasis, nearly all emphasis, on body. We put a little bit on soul. But understand that the way God wants to work is he wants to sanctify me through and through. So he started in my spirit man. He began with being born again. Jesus said, you must be born again. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. I've got to be born again. We have to start on the inside because that's who Eric really is. I'm a spirit man. And if that heart of me, if my love factor, come on, that's what it's all about, love, guys. If that love factor is not dealing with, dealt with, if, if, if that corruption is not made incorruptible, it doesn't matter what you do to the rest because the rest is not life. It's not who I am. So Jesus starts with the heart of the situation, literally. He goes to the heart of the matter. And he says, you must be born again. You've got to be born of the Spirit. So he goes in there, and, and supernaturally, he, he wipes the slate clean. We're told in Colossians that he circumcises that heart and takes out the old rotten pieces of it. And he gives me a new heart, formed and fashioned after his heart. We're told in Isaiah that he would reach in and he would take out the heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh. Wow. So he begins with the heart of man, the spirit of man, the who I am. And from there he begins to, because remember, he's going to sanctify you through and through. And so he next he moves on to what? What's the next part of me? My soul. He begins to work on my mind, will, and emotions. He begins to work on my mind, will, and emotions. We're told that as a man thinks, so is he. Amen? So God begins to work on my mind, will, and emotions. He begins to identify those patterns of thought, those things that because the, the, the heart of man was corrupted, my mind and the way I think about people and life and situations had been corrupted also. I couldn't think properly towards you. As Sister Carol Ann said this morning, that she had to think a new way about a sister. That the, because her spirit man had been changed, she had no choice but to love. And so now the soul man has to line up with it. Amen? And then the body man's got to go ahead and follow through and say, come here, give me a hug. <laughs> but see, we think in life in terms of body, soul, and spirit. Spirit's just something, you know, that eh, we can take it or leave it. But it's the essence. It's who you are. 
And so we have been taught by sin to give this everything at once. If it's hot, I want to cool it down. If it's cold, I want to make it warm. If it's hungry, I want to give it a Snickers. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. We have been taught to give it everything it wants. Oh, if it wants, I see a pretty girl. If it wants, come on, somebody. If I'm mad at you, I, I just, I, 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 and then people say, well, I just spoke my mind. No, you didn't. You spoke out of a corrupted heart. Because this is corrupted, this is corrupted, and then this is corrupted. But if this gets fixed, then this gets fixed, and then this gets fixed. Because he's sanctifying me through and through. All right, so you are a... You are a... Come on. You are a... You have a... You live in a... You are spirit. You're made in God's image. You are eternal. Oh, I know some of y'all think, well, if you accepted Jesus, you're eternal. No, 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 no. You're eternal. The spirit man cannot be destroyed. It will only eternally, eternally dwell with God or in hell. But everybody shall live eternally. Why? Because we're created in the image of God and he created the spirit of man to live forever. In Luke 16, we have the, the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man and Lazarus. And, and, and the rich man, he's there burning and please just give me, give me a drink, give me a drop, help me out. Is his body there? No, his body's not there. His spirit, the real him, is there. But yet he can still feel the fire. And he just wants a drink. And he's going to be there forever and ever and ever. We were created in the image of God. We are eternal spiritual beings, even as God is. And we were not only created in the image of God, but we were created with the same mission of God, which is to have dominion. God not only created you, but he created you to have dominion in the earth. Not in the sweet by and by. He began to try to teach Moses, walking through the, the desert, how to go from beating the rock to speaking to the rock. He said that you will be able to go into a land and eat from vineyards that you didn't plant. Live in cities that you didn't build. Amen. We have been created to have dominion in the earth. We're created in the image of God. You are a spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. That means this first must be sanctified so that I can begin to, to work on this and get the mind of Christ. And then I can tell my body every time it's demanding something, shut up in the name of Jesus. You're not getting what you want. Because I remember a time when my body got anything it wanted. You with me? If you've ever been addicted to cigarettes the way I was for 21 years, I would spend a whole afternoon if I didn't have any cigarettes trying to find one. I know that sounds crazy to you. I could waste a whole day either trying to bum the money or going somewhere to get some. Is that crazy? But that's the way the... Because I thought this ruled this, and this was didn't know what to do. Come on, come on, somebody. So this right here was allowed to tell this to shut up. So I'd be like, man, you, re you, you really got to go look for a job today. Man, I need a cigarette. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, all right, okay, come on, let's go. Amen? I look back on those days, and I think when we sing the song Freedom... What it's like to be free. Not from cigarettes. Free from this. Free from this. And free with this to love and worship God. Wow. Wow. So we see here that, that not only did God create us in his image, but that he's a trinity. He, he made me a trinity. So you are a... You are a spirit. 
You have a soul. You live in a body. Come on, you're, you're going to walk out. If you don't get nothing else today, you're going to know you're a spirit. You're a spirit being, and that spirit can be born again and tell the rest of you, get in line, we're going to follow Jesus. Amen. So you are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. Amen. I, I don't know anybody here that let their house tell them what to do. Well, Pastor Eric, I, you know, I was going to you know, go do this, but as I was walking out the door, the sliding glass door, I said, hold on, where are you going? And I said to the sliding glass door, well, you know, I got some stuff to take care of. No, you ain't. You're going to hang out here today. Well, okay, all right, let me go sit on the couch. No. Does anybody, of course your house don't tell you what to do. Amen. Well, your, your TV might. But we're not going there today. Amen. We'll save that for another message. Amen. All right. So, but I, see, God is spirit. You got to understand that, that, that if I'm made like him, if I'm in his image, because everything bears after its own kind. Every seed reproduces after its own kind. There's no, we, right now we are, um, are blessed. We have our, our pear tree is doing well. Our um, fig tree is doing well. Peach tree is doing well. We have an orange and a lemon tree doing well. The lemon, not so well. But we have two apple trees. And evidently I bought the wrong kind, so they're not pollinating. So they're just leafy. And they have no fruit on them. Hmm? So I need something there to cause them to produce seed. And then when they produce seed, they're not going to grow oranges on them. They're not going to grow pears on them. They should grow red, delicious apples. Amen? Everything produces after its own seed. So we see here that in John 4, 24, that for God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. God is spirit. Well, hold on. You're spirit also. So to worship him in spirit and truth is to say, I'm going to bypass this, I'm going to bypass this, and with this, oh God, the real me, I'm going to worship you. Well, what does that mean? What does that look like? Well, what it means and looks like is that when this don't want to worship, I'm going to anyway. I'll tell it to shut up. And when this doesn't want to worship, I'm going to tell it to shut up. Because this right here wants to worship. Because those who worship God worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, let's be real with each other, though. There's some of us who've had this born again who haven't taught this yet to shut up and definitely haven't taught this yet to shut up. But that's okay. Keep plugging along. Keep working at it. Keep seeking the Lord and, and, and get in the right order of things. No longer let the house tell the owner what to do. Let the owner begin to tell the house what to do and things will get in order. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so God is spirit, but, but I'm spirit also. Genesis 126, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock and over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Amen. Not only am I created in his image, spirit, but I also have his mission, dominion. Amen? Amen? I've got to tell you, I spent my whole life, even up now, up through my life to now, laboring against a self-image of, of not being, uh, of looking at this instead of this, and not having dominion, but always worried about that something's going to have dominion over me. Do you realize how much complaining we do? Oh, Lord God, help me. A complaining spirit is one that says, I don't understand who I am and what the authority I've been given. Because I should be speaking to the problem instead of complaining against the problem. I should be speaking to the rock and say, you will bring forth water instead of beating it with a stick, saying, please go away, do something. So when I begin to get a hold of the who I am and what I have and where I live, I begin to understand that I'm made in God's image and I have been given dominion because he's the king and he has all dominion. 
I'm the child of a king. That makes last week's message make all the sense in the world, huh? That, that I'm, a, I'm a, 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 a part of a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Wow, royalty. Did, Sister Loretta, did you know you were royalty? Did you know you were royalty? And, and, and we settle for so little, crumbs, when we can sit at the banquet table. Hallelujah. So God's a spirit, I'm a spirit, but does God got soul? Does God got soul? Because, hey, we say in here, we, we're three-piece. Amen? It says here in Isaiah 55, 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Hmm. So God's be thinking. Do you be thinking? Amen? And Romans it tells us, And who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Wow. So, so, God knows it all, but he also has soul. So he thinks, I don't think like him, but he thinks like me. Let, me. let me explain. That if I'm made in his image, I have a thinker that's made like his thinker. Mine's corrupted, his is not corrupted. Amen? But the thinker that I was given was made in the image of the great thinker of heaven. So we're told later on, in fact, in that Romans passage, if we go on, it says, and we have the mind of Christ. I'm sorry, in 2 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 2, that we do have the mind of Christ. Amen. People all the time, they'll quote that verse and say, well, you can't think like God. And then we're told that because I'm born again, because the spirit man, the who I am, has been fixed. The how I am can be fixed. Amen. I can begin to think like God. I can begin to think that I need to love my neighbor. The spirit man is telling me to love my neighbor, but I might start out as a, when you start out as a Christian, you don't start out thinking that you need to love your neighbor. You're thinking you need to get over on your neighbor. You're thinking you need to tell your neighbor to stay on your side of the fence. You're thinking your neighbor needs to keep their dog from pooping in your yard or whatever the case may be. Your thoughts to your neighbor aren't automatically godly because your spirit man got changed. But then you can begin to take on the mind of Christ. You can begin to think like God. Amen? Because God is a thinker. He has soul. Or in the vernacular, he got soul, huh? That he, I am made in his image, so he is the one that first has to be spirit and have soul if I'm made in his image. Because I am a spirit. I have soul. And so, for soul man, which is me, amen, Proverbs 23 says this, we've already quoted it, for as he thinks in his, so is he. Eat and drink will he say unto thee, but his heart is not with thee. He's saying what your mind can be like. Oh, you can say this, but, but your mind is, is, because as your mind thinks is how you're really going to act. Come on, somebody. Oh, you say things because they're necessary to say. They're the right things to say. We Christians take on Christian vernacular. Well, praise the Lord, brother. But the reality is we ain't thinking nothing like praise the Lord. So what we should be is a community of believers where I can say I can't praise the Lord right now. I'm discombobulated. My spirit man wants to praise the Lord, but my soul man ain't with it. I need to be able to confess my faults one to another because why? Because I'm born again. I'm forgiven. I've been washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't need to make excuses for this or this. I need to stand against them. Come on, somebody. I need to stand against them. I need to let the real me tell the rest of me, line up. But that don't mean the rest of me is ready to line up yet. So I need you. I need to be able to confess to you, I want to serve the Lord, but the rest of me ain't getting it yet. So help me, pray for me, correct me, call me, hook me up when I need to be hooked up, get me straight because I'm struggling here. Amen. Well, I don't need to make excuses for struggle. I need to confess it and get healed of it. Amen? Amen. So, so don't, don't do like the proverb said because the reality is, is as you think is the way you're really going to be. It don't matter what you're... The way you think is the way you're really going to act. So you got this struggling against this. Confess what this is doing so that this can take over control. Amen? Come on. All right. And so, but hold on. I'm, I'm a spirit. 
I have a soul, and I live in a body. But God is spirit, so where is his body? Well, let's take a look at it. He was manifested in the flesh. Hebrews 2.14 says this, And since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, and that is the devil. Wow, think about that with me for a minute. Think about that with me. That's, that's deep, and we need to think for a minute. That because God birthed me with flesh and blood, he himself took on a body because I'm made in his image. And he took on that body so that he could conquer the things that I can't conquer. He took on that body to be a sacrifice where I couldn't sacrifice, to take my place. And that is the miracle of grace because I don't deserve anybody to take my place. I don't deserve to be forgiven because I knew all along my conscious man was saying don't do, but my flesh man was saying do. And I obeyed one and rejected the other. Come on, somebody. But God didn't say, well, I'm going to condemn you to hell, son, because of that. He said, I'm going to offer you redemption out of that. Amen. Woo! I'm going to offer you a way out. I'm going to throw a line of rescue. I'm going to come down from heaven. I'm going to take on a body because you are in my image. And I will come experience what you've experienced. Wow, the grace of God. Who can even fathom? Now we can say, who, who has known the mind of the Lord? Amen? Wow, God, that you would take my place, that you would die in my place, that you would make an exchange for me, that you would rescue my spirit, that you would sanctify me through and through, that you would release my mind, and you would give me dominion over my body, because this is the part of us that's what? On the earth. And weren't we told to have dominion over everything? Come on, somebody, hold on. You missed that verse, didn't you? Yeah. We were told to have dominion over everything that walks on the the first place I need to get some dominion is where? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah! Right here. I need dominion. The power that comes from God. And Christ came and gave that. He gave back to humanity what was lost in the garden. He redeemed me to not only be in the image of God, but to now be with God. Amen? Wow. So you are a... You have a... And you live in a... You are a spirit. And with Christ, if you haven't been born again, we're going to open up the altars and let you come forth and, and, and come to Christ and say, I want to be born again. Start with the inward man and change me. Amen. Don't try to clean up the outside first. Your mind's going to say, now listen, conviction and repentance will say, you need to change your life. And I say, amen. Amen. But the first thing you need to do is say, change my heart so that I can change my life. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. So you can quit smoking and still be a thief. You can stop stealing and still be a liar. Come on, somebody. Amen? But if you change my heart, oh God, I'm none of these. And when I do do these things, they make me feel so sick and terrible that I cry out for mercy and grace. Because I'm not the same. I've been bought with a price. I'm a Holy Ghost filled man. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see here that since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in my humanity. So that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, and that is the devil. Say, man, someone say he defeated the devil. Defeated. Ain't that good stuff? Give him a hand, clap of praise. Woo! He defeated him. He did a tap dance on his grave, man. I'm telling you what. I, I, I love the way Colossians put it. It says when he rose again, he made an open mockery of Satan. It's kind of, and, and the way I always look at that is na 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 boo boo. <laughs> you couldn't keep me down. I set him free. I set him free. He said, as a, 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 what, did he went down and preached to the spirits in prison 
And then when he uh, descended, he took them in a train, it says. And when he ascended, he led those captives out of captivity. Hallelujah! The power of God to set the captives free. That's good stuff. I was saying to someone this morning at the coffee bar, I said, man, I said, you know, all this stuff is great. Life is busy, but I'm just so glad to be free. Amen? Amen. That he came and set this captive free. Thank you, Jesus. Now, of course, if, if God was manifested in the flesh, and he was, then it, it's beyond reason to know that I also got a bag of bones. Huh? I've also got a bag of bones here. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says this. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed. How often? Every day. Come on, somebody. Think, th think about this for a minute. Wow. That is why, say, I never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. Never give up. Never give up. I don't care how bad yesterday was. I blew it, Pastor. You just don't, man, I, I just blew it. I was a jerk. I can't. So what? Ask forgiveness and move on. Amen. But, Pastor, you don't understand. I, I, I'm sick. I'm this and that. We were saying the other day I had, I had contracted some dis-ease in my feet. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a silly dis-ease. And it, it, it makes you dis-ease. When you get out of bed in the morning, you can't walk. And, and I've uh, stumbled and fallen. And, and uh, of course, uh, um, it's just ridiculous. And it hurts miserably. And really, this is the first time I'm, I'm publicly talking about it. And it was only because a couple of people in church found out about it this week when they saw me actually trying to get up one time. And I couldn't get out of my, I couldn't get out of my chair. And I stumbled across my floor. Because I can't walk after I sit in my chair for a few minutes. And, 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 and I think God needed to say something to someone because I don't really care about the dis-ease in my feet. I'm not looking for disability. I'm not looking for a way out. I'm not looking for an excuse. This body is dying and I don't really care. Because my spirit man is being renewed day by day and I'm not going to give up. Someone my own age just died this morning. This morning. And I went over there and I held the family and, and uh, sat with them. And I thought, this is just a bag of bones, baby. It's a bag of bones. Eric, get your eyes off of it. Get your eyes off of it because this is the real me. This is the real me. The heart of me. And the heart of me loves Jesus because he first loved me. Amen. Amen. The heart of me loves you because you are me. We're brothers and sisters. The heart of me loves the lost and dying world out there because I was one of them and I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's the real me. And if my body don't want to line up, then I'll get me a speedy chair, praise God, huh? We're going to get there. And if my mind don't want to line up, we're going to tell the mind, shut up and get on with the program because the heart of man now has been redeemed and I love Jesus and I want what he wants. Amen. Guys, I've got to tell you, I'm a, there was a, a passage that's come to me all week long, all week long, all week long. This passage has come to me and it's been just, it's 1 Kings 18.43, man, and that thing's been coming to me. And, and it just, I can't release it out of my mind. And it's, it's where Elisha tells his uh, a servant, he says, go to the hill and, and look for the cloud. It's getting ready to rain. It's getting ready to rain. It's been three years of a famine. Three years of a famine. The, and, and, and he says, go to the, and the guy goes up, nothing. No, no rain clouds, nothing. Comes back. Seven times he sends him back to the hill. Seven times go back up there and look. Guys, I... I I know what it's like to feel like you're in a three-year famine. I know what it's like to feel like, man, where's the rain, oh God? Where's the rain? I need some rain, oh God. Your, your, your flesh is screaming. Your mind is beating you down. But your spirit, man, has been hanging on. Don't give up. Seven times, he said, goes to the hill. Finally, the guy comes back and he says, well, I see a little black dot out on the horizon over the ocean. And he said, now you go tell King Ahab. 
He said, you better get it, tell him, get on the ball. He better get moving because it's going to rain so hard he won't even be able to get to his palace. Guys, you got to be able to go look up on the mountain and believe that what God has said is going to happen. He's, he's, God spoke something to me 15 years ago and it died. And it died and then I was beating that thing trying to resurrect it and didn't know how to do it. And he said, it's coming. The rain is coming. Don't you pay attention to the famine. Don't you pay attention to the drought. Don't you pay attention to what your, your body's screaming. Don't you pay attention to what your mind can't or can believe. You just hang on and believe me because I spoke it. I'm going to do it. I'm with you. I'm not leaving you. I'm telling you right now, I see a rain cloud out there. God is getting ready to pour out a spirit, and I'm lining myself up to receive it. Amen. So I'm warning you, you better get to where you need to get to because it's going to get so wet out there, you ain't going to be able to get there. Amen? If you, you better move. You better move because it's going to pour down raining. It's going to pour down raining. Stand your feet with me, please, if you can.